Males can discharge stuff out of their nipples that's from high prolactin. Normally, it's, again, utilized in a female who's breastfeeding the prolactin raises, and that helps with lactation. What is up, everyone? It's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907. Check out 1907wire.com. Coupon code Russo. ASMR Spritz is Intelligent Elephant Carbon. Code Russo as well for this pimp jacket I'm spritzing on. Here's these noises. Oh, so crispy. Welcome back to Peducation. Today, I'm talking about the most popular anti-prolactin drug there is, Caber, otherwise known as Cabergoline. Cabergoline is a selective dopamine receptor agonist specifically with a strong binding affinity to the dopamine 2 receptors. So by agonizing these receptors, this is the negative feedback loop to stop prolactin production. Now, prolactin is one of those things that creeps up with, you know, trend, DECA, NPP, especially when you mix testosterone with any of these agents and normally causes a prolactin spike, which is different from normal estrogen related sides, right? High prolactin in males is going to lead towards lactation of the nipples. Yes, you can get a discharge of Andrew throw up the video I reacted to. <laughs> delicious milk you see this guy spraying all over the public gym is prolactin based gyno. This normally results from trembolone and nandrolone abuse. An anti-prolactin such as vitamin B6, caper, or pramipexil will need to be used. Yeah, so males can discharge stuff out of their nipples that's from high prolactin. Normally it's again utilized in a female who's breastfeeding the prolactin raises and that helps with lactation when you start fucking around with all these roids especially trend mpp these sort of agents and you mix them with testosterone normally they're pretty good standalone but when you mix them with testosterone it causes a prolactic conversion that can lead towards prolactin based gyno so a lot of guys will start to feel gyno coming on and they're like oh my estrogen is high blah 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 they nuke the estrogen and that prolactin is still going out of control the ai won't help that you would need an anti-prolactin such as again vitamin b6 p5p i already made video you can go watch the b6 of a warning now not everyone is going to get neuropathy from b6 i'm just saying that that exists right you're going to roll that dice and, you know a lot of people get angry andrew when i just point out like a really bad side effect where it's like it's not effective me but i'm just telling you what could happen right that leads you to the most popular anti-prolactin which is the d2 agonist caber so caber in a medical setting was developed to again stop women who had out of control prolactin and to stop that feedback loop because too much prolactin can lead to infertility in both males and females to describe what prolactin in high amounts does to you sexually is at first a little bit of high prolactin is gonna make you last longer in bed it's gonna stop the refractory period <clears throat> it's also going to elongate the refractory period between sexual rounds aka you have to wait longer between rounds and then over time as prolactin creeps up it'll get to a point where you get perfectly hard and just randomly go soft that's when prolactin's completely out of whack and drugs like caber come in there bring the prolactin back down and you can actually since it's mimicking dopamine on a dopamine 2 receptor you can nuke your prolactin to zero which could theoretically cause you hypersexual abilities to go round after round after round and actually do three constant rounds of sex this is where caber shifts towards okay just managing prolactin towards okay this is one of those superhero compounds in the bedroom that could lead towards heart damage so that's where i'll leave this at is that prammy in my opinion is the better choice now prammy comes with its own crazy set of side effects and i'll eventually get to doing prammy later but i never had any weird dreams with caber 
right? I never had any weird dreams with Kaber, but with Prammy. It's having some <laughs> some crazy dreams on Prammy, you know? Prammy fucks people up, Kaber fucks people up. So as far as the one I would go with, I would go with Prammy. I would go with Prammy, I would not go with Kaber. The reason being is because Kaber, and I'm gonna get flack for this, I'm just saying the potential side effects. In a minuscule dosage, you are fine with Kaber, but if you start leaning in towards Kaber and utilizing it to make sex feel better, utilizing it to, again, go multiple rounds without break, and you're just creeping up the dosage constantly, it has been known to damage the valves on the heart. So keep that in mind, people have gotten permanent heart damage from Kaber. That's where the shift from Kaber to Prammy happened, right? Now, this is all dosage dependent. This is usage dependent, right? If you're using 0 0.25, 0 0.5 twice a week, are you really going to have an issue? Probably not, but that does exist there. If you are getting closer to one frequently, constantly with Kaber, I could see it potentially causing heart damage and when you're mixing that with all the anabolic steroids associated with controlling prolactin aka Tren which jacks blood pressure up npp deca jacks blood pressure up you can see where again this is just a recipe for disaster if you're using caber as a sexual performance enhancing drug so i'm going to use a medical reference the anabolics 11th edition the dosages they recommend is to start with 250 micrograms per application twice per week and then you can go up to one milligram per week if needed and this drug can obviously be used for extended periods of time but my two cents is you can get caber under control within two weeks if you're aggressive with getting your prolactin under control remember prolactin is something you don't want to put off right it gets worse and worse and worse until you can't fuck it all if prolactin is that high and then you're getting lactating nipples like you're gonna squeeze yellow white shit out of your nipples like you don't want to be fucking around with extremely high High prolactin all right yeah overall that's my thoughts you know i definitely wanted to touch on that caber makes you a superman in bed that gets addicting then you're constantly messing around with higher dosages than you should to just control prolactin you're more addicted towards the hey i can just fucking come put it back in come put it back in and go round after round after round back to back to back that's because you are stopping that prolactin build up in between rounds every time you come there's going to be a little bit of a prolactin dump and if you have that negative feedback loop being fucked with by caber that's never going to happen and that's going to allow you to constantly go round after round after round so that's where i see caber becoming problematic as far as all the heart issues go i don't see caber used in a very sparingly sense just to control prolactin and to get in get out with it get on get off and control prolactin it being that much of an issue however I will state that, again, I started with Kaber. I really enjoyed the sexual benefits of Kaber. And then I was like, oh, man, I looked up all the heart potential damage it could do and slowly switched off towards prolactin. And again, I was sifting towards using it more all the time, just being honest because of the sexual performance benefits. But that in the long run is not healthy for the heart. I hope you guys learned something. I will see you guys in my next video.